In the first video, I said that most tools in machine learning and data science boil down in the end to two steps. First, write out a probability model. Second, fit the model from data. There's just one standard technique for fitting a model, and it works all the way from simple toy examples up to neural networks. It's called maximum likelihood estimation. Here's the definition. We're supposing our probability model has unknown parameters, which we'd like to estimate. First, write down the likelihood, which is just the probability of seeing the data that we actually did see. The model has parameters, so the likelihood must be a function of those parameters. We just do the obvious thing and choose the parameter values that maximize the likelihood. The optimum set of parameters is called the maximum likelihood estimator, or MLE. Let's work through some examples. We'll start with the biased coin, the favorite example of probabilists everywhere. Suppose we take a biased coin and toss it 10 times and observe six heads. Let's use the following probability model. Probability of seeing number of heads equal to x is dot dot dot, where the parameters are p, the probability of heads, one minus p, the probability of tails. Question asks us, what is p? So let's write down the likelihood. The likelihood of seeing the data, I'll write it as likelihood of p because it's a function of p, is n choose x, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. The question tells us this. d by dp, I want to find the maximum of this function, so I'll set derivative equal to 0, and that tells me which, after a whole load of algebra, turns into the simple answer p hat equals x on n. I write hat to remind myself that this is just the maximum that I found. Think of the hat as the top of the mountain. Before doing this, I should really have sketched out the function to reassure myself that this is a maximum, not a minimum. This is what the function looks like. I could get that just by plotting it on the computer with the sample value of x. Or a better way to solve this problem is to take logs first. Here I've gathered the terms which don't involve p into a constant kappa. We're only interested in this function as a function of p, so I don't care about those terms. Here's a sketch of the log likelihood. Obviously it's just got to have the optimum at precisely the same value of p because log is an increasing function. So if we differentiate this, we get a slightly simpler looking expression, and from here, we get exactly the same answer. When I'm writing out things like this, I like to write the probability of seeing x heads semicolon p to remind myself that the answer involves both x and p. Okay, this is maximum likelihood estimation. Next example will show us what to do when the model has more than one parameter. Here's the example. Suppose we ask n equals 100 people their views on Brexit. 37 say leave, 35 say remain, and the other 28 don't care. Use the probability model, blah, 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 with unknown parameters PL and PR. You may recognize this equation as the probability mass function of a multinomial distribution, but if you don't recognize it, it doesn't make any difference. We want to find the maximum likelihood estimator for PL. Crucial thing about this one, about any problem with multiple parameters, is that you need to include all the parameters in your model when you do the maximization. Even if, though we're in, just interested in one of them, we need to maximize over all of the unknown parameters and then we just throw away the ones we're not interested in. So let's go ahead and do the maximization. Write out the log likelihood. And find out where the maximum is. I have to differentiate with respect to both of the unknown variables.
there were two variables so I set two derivatives equal to zero this gives me simultaneous equations which I can solve for PL and for PR and the solution comes out to be this So what would go wrong if we tried to estimate just one of the parameters? Here's a bad answer to the question. Suppose we thought, hey, I want to estimate PL. All I need to do is differentiate with respect to PL. We'd write out this derivative here and we'd solve it and we'll get our answer for PL hat. And our answer will involve PR. This is no good because PR is an unknown parameter. What's the use in an estimate for PL which depends on something we don't know? To emphasize this role, the word, here's the word to look out for, estimator. Sometimes MLE is written maximum likelihood estimator. The point of this word is that the an estimator is something that takes in the data set we have and gives us an estimate. It's a function whose job it is to produce an estimate. It's not allowed to depend on things we don't know. This is an easy trap to fall into. You should always do a quick sanity check and make sure that any estimates you get are legitimate estimators. Our final example will show a nifty math trick for dealing with parameters where the root parameter influences the range of a random variable. Using indicator functions to handle boundaries, we throw a k-sided dice and get the answer 10. I'm imagining it's one of these dice, lots and lots of sides, too hard to figure, count the number of sides by eye. Estimate k using this probability model. OK, let's get started. Let's write out the likelihood, the probability of observing the data we saw. Likelihood of k, 1 on k. Well, sketch this function. The optimum is clearly k as small as possible. I suppose we'd have to say k equals 2. It's hard to imagine a one-sided dice. OK, this is absurd. How on earth could we have got the answer 10 from a one-sided dice? We've done something wrong. Here's the better way to answer the question. Write out the likelihood. Likelihood is just the probability of observing the data given the parameter. And this is the crucial thing that we failed to take account of before. The likelihood is zero if k is too small. This indicator function, that's what it's called, it's just a way of writing conditions in algebra. The indicator function returns one if the statement is true, zero if the statement is false, and this is called the indicator function. Let's rewrite that. Now this is the trick with indicator functions and turns into times. The only way I can get one out of the product of those two terms is if both of the terms are equal to one. In other words, the only way in which the compound sentence can be true is if both clauses are true. One more trick with indicator functions. Here I've simply taken the final term and I've flipped the inequality the other way around. Instead of saying x less than or equal to k, I've written it k greater than or equal to x. I'm interested in maximizing this whole thing as a function of k and writing it this way just makes it easier for me to think through what's going on. OK, so now I can plot this likelihood function. Likelihood is 0 until we hit x and then it follows the 1 on k trajectory. That's what the indicator term here does. So the optimum is clearly k hat equals x. OK, we've seen three examples now where we can find the maximum likelihood estimator using maths. It's almost never the case that maths will be good enough. Most of the time in machine learning, we have to use a computer and do numerical optimization. The next video will show how.